This video was brought to you by Bedroom Planner, Ken Power, Marcus Beal, and Stolenberg. Yo, what's up? We are again at Ayonti Dal, and behind me here you see the Audi e-tron Q4. Yes, that's what they call it. I mean, it's actually Q4 e-tron. Q... It's e-tron, very confusing name, and 40 also, very confusing name. But this is based on the MBB platform. It's uh, you know, it's like the sister or brother of uh, ID4 and uh, Enyaq. But actually, ID4 and Enyaq, they are similar in many ways, I'll point out, but this one is different. So on the outside, it looks like an Audi. We have some fake grill here that will gather bugs. Yeah, it's not even, it's not even even. So I don't know about aerodynamics, but whatever. Now, it has a CD value like the ID, uh, 4, if I remember correctly, it's 0.28, whereas the Enyaq has 0.24 or something. But what is important for this test, maybe, might be that we have Bridgestone, Turanza, Eco, but yeah, and 235-55-19. So 19-inch wheels, I like it. 55 profile for the win. Uh, it's um, staggered, because in the back you have 255-50-19. And in the back here, it looks similar to an ID uh, 4, but we have 12 volt outlet here. And we also have 12 volt outlet in the front. So I will show you. You see, this is where, uh, well, okay, only manual seats. Uh, here, 12 volt outlet in the front. And you guys always wonder what do I use it for? Well, it is to charge my camcorder or it, to run my laptop. But look, it looks like an Audi. Um, the ID4 and Enyaq, they use the, I would call it the, um, the ID OS or whatever. <laughs> you know, that, that type of new user interface for the ID3, ID4. But Audi, they choose to use their own Audi system. So it looks and feels just like an e-tron, uh, the fat e-tron or even the e-tron GT. You, if you know Audi, you know the whole menu system here you go settings you have here you see mi all of this but not only that but uh well okay i'm not plugged in now but when you're charging you also see the charging charging screen and charging um, speed just like the fat e-tron and the feature i love is this you can see state of charge in percentage in the instrument cluster huh danke schön man finally the Germans, they have learned. So, um, yeah, uh, the reason why I unplug now is because uh, I don't want the car to suck any crazy power for cooling down the battery. But uh, we're gonna do the range test, but we don't have to do the full test because we already know the battery. This is the 82 kilowatt hour battery. So uh, we will do the 120 test first and then the 90 test afterwards. All right, let's check the weight of the car. One thousand and eighty. Oh, okay. Two two sixty. Mm, all right. Okay. Let's check how uh, Mjolnir is today. We have uh, we have some tailwind. Yes, some tailwind. Okay. Yeah, a little bit windy, but that's fine. Nice weather, uh, 18 degrees Celsius, and consumption right now is 231. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's go one full loop. Uh oh, uh, we are right uh, by Stung, and I just saw. I just started recording a little bit late, but you see, they completely closed this section of the road, uh, which means that it uh, it ruins the test. Because my test is based on going back and forth. So, um, I have to, uh, yeah, <laughs> I have to redo the test. It's ruined. Uh, I'll figure out something. I have to do a, a, another loop somewhere else. Yeah. Maybe I'll just go back to, uh, yeah, okay, I have to go back to uh, <laughs> Dahl and start again. Man, okay, let's turn around somewhere. Uh, next exit, uh, okay.
All right, change of plan. Uh, right now we are at Tongan. I can show you here. The plan now is that we will drive to Dal and then back again here. So it's just still ABA, just a different stretch. And remember that the test that I do, the range test can be reproduced anywhere. So even if you do ABA like this, or we do it with direction, or we do it in Germany, or somewhere else, as long as you can cruise at 120 kilometers per hour or 90 kilometers per hour, it should give you more or less the same result. So that would be only a 104 kilometer loop, but that's good enough. So let me reset everything and then off we go again. All right, we are back at the starting point and uh, well, now it has changed. Uh, it's actually counting while we are stationary, <laughs> which in my opinion is wrong. Uh, you should not count uh, when, especially when you're in park, okay? If you're in drive like this, then it makes more sense that it's counting the consumption. But when it's in park, it should not count the consumption. So, um, uh, well, no, no, now it's trying to stop the whole car, of course. But it was 227 watt amp per kilometer. I checked that the distance, according to Google, is supposed to be 94. It shows 93, which means that we have 1% underreported distance. And that means that the consumption was in fact 225 and that means that we get 333 kilometers of range given that we have 75 kilowatt hour i just take the result from other tests i've done but that was that is the semi-confusing part which is that um, in the id4 i managed to get 75 kilowatt hour when i tested enyaq i only got 73 something kilowatt hour and also recently uh in the GTX, I only managed to get 73, but at least I'm being optimistic and I assume 75 from this one. So, right now we do the slow test, the same thing, 90 kilometers per hour and end up at the same spot. We are on the move now, so um, slightly different. Well, I mean, it's the same route, but it's just a different start and stop point, but that doesn't matter. So, right now, I have the cruise at 93 kilometers per hour and yeah, the, the weird feature with this e-tron is that um, you know if you want to try to set cruise control I'm going to show you here um, when you tap up it goes up by 10 if you tap down it goes down by 10 and you have some other buttons I trust me I tried all the buttons there is no way to tap up by one you guys don't even try to uh, come up with ideas because I already asked the live stream people they came with some assumptions but they actually didn't know uh, I also look in the manual. There is no way to go up by just one. The only way to do it is to drive it at the exact speed you want. Let me see. There. And then you set it. 93. Yes. <laughs> Vorsprung durch Technik, right? <laughs> uh, so, um, trust me, guys. I have tr I've driven the regular e-tron, the fat e-tron before. Arr! I have no uh, auto steer. And I also driven the e-tron GT. They can adjust it up and down by one. You know, I know how this stock over here works, but in the e-tron GT, I mean in the e-tron uh, Q4 here, or whatever. But uh, one feature I do like is this, I mentioned it before, you can see now 44% here. Look at that. Oh, man, oh man, nice. And look at that consumption, huh? 155 watt hour per kilometer. E-tron, go home! Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> okay, anyway, so, um, yeah, we're just enjoying the ride. We're gonna go back to Ayuntidal and then go back to the starting point again, yes. We are back at the starting point and look at this. 156 watt amp per kilometer, but we have to correct for distance error. So it's actually 154 watt amp per kilometer. That is simply amazing. Wait, that's leaf. Okay, but at least it's uh, really good. <laughs> this is the most efficient e-tron ever. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to do a little conclusion. I had to crunch the numbers, but I, I have to top up at Dahl. So I will go over there and then we do the conclusion and comparison over there. Right, we are back at Ionti, charging up. So I'm actually preparing for a trailer test with the Q4. Oh yeah, but the trailer test is so important that I will have it in a separate video because if I have it in here, people might miss it. So anyway, so um, 
You see that uh, today we had remarkably low consumption with the Q4. But you know, remember this is this uses the same motor and the same uh, battery as ID4 and ENIAC, and it also has supposedly the same drag coefficient as ID4. But uh, I think the reason why the consumption was so low today was mainly two things. Uh, it was that we have nice, nice sunny weather, nice and hot weather in Norway, <laughs> and that we have 19-inch wheels. Because if you look at the table, you see that with the other cars we have 20 and 21-inch. So those tires they consume a little bit more in combination with slightly colder weather. Uh, then you have the difference. So it means that if I would take an ID4 today or even Enyaq today with 19-inch wheels, I would probably get the same consumption more or less yes and wow so you mean that we can go almost 500 kilometers <laughs> but um okay but what i don't know is exactly how uh, much uh, how many kilowatt hours i have here because i'm gotten some weird numbers in the past it's been ranging between 72 and 75 kilowatt hour and i don't know if some of that has been changed over the software update so ideally i should try this car uh to see how many kilowatt hours get but I, when i tested the gtx it was only giving me 72 kilowatt hour so it's still a big mystery but even if we get only 72 kilowatt hour from this we will still get 467 kilometers of range which is still pretty good yeah but i think that's going to be it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later